Good Sunday morning, everybody. Guess what I'm doing? Believe it or not, I'm doing breakfast before I get started with dinner. Tony's going to come over and we're just going to eat breakfast. Uh, we're going to do some cream of wheat, y'all. It says two and a half minute cream of wheat, but guess how long I cook mine? Now, y'all know I got to cook it until it says, come on in, y'all. So, come on in and join us for cream of wheat, bacon, eggs, and toast. It's going to be a short and sweet one, then we'll start in with our dinner or recording so this morning we're going to do cream of wheat bacon eggs and toast so watch and look a lot of people have a problem with uh, cream of wheat they either get it too thick or too thin or burned or whatever so what i've already got going here y'all so you can see this is approximately two cups of boiling water now nobody's going to need this but tanya and myself um so i'm doing two cups of boiling water Make sure that water is boiling really good. And I'm probably going to have to add some more, and I'll let you know how much I add. This is a half a cup of cream of wheat, and I and I poured a half a cup of water in it. About, well, about three-fourths of a cup of water in it to get it to a, almost like a paste. And I put about a half a teaspoon of salt in that water. I always try to season that water up a little bit. So this cream of wheat is going to be eaten with butter and sugar. So what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to go ahead and pour the cream of wheat mixture into the boiling water. And you got to keep it stirred now. Stir, stir, stir as you pour it in. Because if you don't stir it, it will lump and clump and get too thick on you. Okay? So see? Got to stir it, stir it, stir it. And I still got some cream of wheat left in the bowl. I'm going to get some more water. About another uh, half a cup of water to rinse that extra out of there. Okay? Keep it, you got to continue to stir it until it gets nice and thick. We can turn the heat down and just let it cook for another 45 minutes. Okay, so that's all of my cream of wheat into the pot. And I always get me some water on the side over here. Just in case I need a little bit of extra water. So just always get that, keep that water standing by. Now, that cream of wheat is going to come back to a bubbling boil and when it does it'll cook into the water and it'll get really thick because remember now this box says two and a half minutes i don't cook mine two and a half minutes i cook mine in with 45 minutes to an hour so it's going to be a while before we actually start eating i'm just going to drop in a tablespoon of butter while it's cooking and when it gets done you add as much more butter into it as you like that one that didn't look like a good tablespoon so i have to get the rest of that tablespoon there we go that's more like a tablespoon right there. So we're just going to keep uh, stirring in it. And in a few minutes, here we're going to have some nice cream. And in two and a half minutes, it'll look like whatever the box is talking about. I don't know. But I know I've always, 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 always cooked mine uh, as long as I possibly could. Now, the other cream of wheat in the store said instant. So I didn't want the instant. So it said, this one here, I guess, is close to the original. But this is something my mom used to cook for us, alternating with grits every morning before we went off to school with some biscuits. We ate lots of carbs, but anyway, it was good. Anyway, when my niece was here, she is a cream of wheat and grits lover. She said, Auntie, I have been thinking about wanting cream of wheat ever since I was uh, thinking about coming to visit you. So while she was here, I made cream of wheat for her. And I, I did a video, but it didn't do too well, so... I didn't get to record that one. So I thought I'd get on here this morning and just give y'all a little quick cream of wheat lesson. But see how nice and thin and smooth that is? And remember, like I told you before, when you're cooking, you have to know your food to know what care you have to give to it. Just like uh, dealing with uh, any other thing, you have to know about it in order to give it the right care, the right attention, the right amount of time, whatever. Even, you know, it's like when you're dealing with people, you have to know people to know how to treat them. Okay, now that cream of wheat is getting ready to start uh, bubbling up, boiling, then I'm going to lower that heat, cover it, and I'm just going to let it sit there and cook until we get ready to eat it in about an hour from now, or 45 minutes, or whatever. I know some of y'all think, why is she cooking it so long? Because it makes it taste so good. Mm-hmm. It makes it taste so good. You probably think I'm cooking out whatever, and that's okay, because by the time I get through adding butter and uh, sugar and milk to it we'll have all that right back into it so we're not to worry about that the taste is there though because if i serve that cream of wheat after two and a half minutes it just wouldn't be right but now see the consistency it needs to be in order for it to cook that long so now 
if, as you can see, it's starting to bubble. So now I can start lowering that heat on it. I can get it all the way down to low. And then I'm going to stir it a little bit more to get it all. See that? Now when it gets done, it'll be nice and thick. And you just drop some sugar in there and, and some more butter. Salt, whatever you want to put in. Cheese, you can even do cheese. Okay, so that's right. That's good. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is cover it. And that was in real time. So uh, you see how simple it is to make cream of wheat. Grits are made in a similar manner, but you know the consistency of grits and cream of wheat is a little bit different. Cream of wheat is very, very soft, and uh, grits are more granular, and they get thicker and bulkier. But they still have that cre creamy, rich, mm, I want some cheese and some cream in it flavor to go with my eggs and my bacon. So we're going to come back uh, when these get done and I'll have the eggs and the bacon ready. So hang on y'all. Get you a cup of coffee. I got the coffee pot set up to turn on in a minute. So go ahead and get you a cup of coffee and sip on your coffee while you're cooking that cream of wheat. So hang on now. Okay, y'all, we got the bacon out of the skillet. We got, got to have a little couple pieces of little sausage in there that we're going to use. So, got that going. We'll get the eggs up next, and we'll be ready to eat here shortly. Okay, y'all, time to get back to breakfast. I'm going to go ahead and do my gourmet eggs to go along with my creamy cream of wheat and my crispy um, bacon and the toast. So, I'm going to go ahead and get these eggs in. And remember, when you're doing the eggs now, you have to have the um, heat down low because we don't want them to get hard or anything like that. So I got cheese in here. I got four eggs, um, fourth of a cup of cheese, and I have a mixture of cheese. I've got some Swiss cheddar and that Mexican blend. If you'll notice those eggs, how they um, begin to uh, come together. Now the skittles are a little bit hotter than usual. But usually it takes about five minutes to do scrambled eggs. Now these are going to be nice and cheesy and creamy. Okay. I got my uh, bacon standing by. I'm going to go ahead and heat it. I cooked it ahead of time, of course. So we're just going to let those eggs sort of slow cook. And I'm going to go ahead and put my lid back on my cream of wheat. Now, as you're cooking your cream of wheat, like I said, I cook my cream of wheat anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour because I like it well cooked. The two and a half minutes just does not do it for me. So, my cream of wheat is still on very, very low now to keep it hot. Um, so, we're going to be ready to sit down and eat here shortly. So, the flavor train pulled in a little bit earlier this morning. It's doing a uh, stopover. So this is a stopover. It's not at the main stop yet, y'all. So we're going to be on with dinner here shortly. Uh, dinner today is going to be real easy. Quite frankly, I don't feel like being in the kitchen for a prolonged period of time today. So we're going to have a nice, easy dinner today. And we'll get to that shortly. Yeah. Uh, that. Okay, y'all, there it is, the finished product. We got uh, gourmet scrambled eggs, turkey bacon, one little stick of sausage, some toast, and, of course, that good old creamy cream of wheat. So we're going to get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. Thank you for watching. Dinner up. Hey, y'all, I'm back. It's time to get Sunday dinner started. We've finished up breakfast. It's time for Sunday dinner. So what we're having today on the menu is going to be uh, Angus beef burgers, turkey burgers, uh, oven roasted sweet potato spears, Chinese sweet and sour cabbage, and fresh corn on the cob. So what I'm going to start with first is uh, my sweet potato spears. What I've done is just cleaned up five pounds of organic sweet potatoes. And you already see I've got a couple of tablespoons of butter. Well, actually a half cup of butter. Uh, already sloshed onto the potatoes and I'm going to be putting a little bit more and I'm going to toss them in a one cup of brown sugar and a teaspoon of um, cinnamon and an eighth 
Remember that one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, just to give it that uh, flavor. And then I'm gonna toss a little bit of vanilla flavor. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that vanilla flavor. I just love vanilla flavor on there. And then I'm gonna hit them with about a teaspoon of uh, sea salt. Go ahead and do the sea salt. Sea salt is just wonderful to me. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and make sure that that butter gets all over those potatoes. And then I'm going to throw the uh, brown sugar and cinnamon on top. And then I'm going to arrange them on a greased um, baking sheet. And I'm going to put them in the oven. They're going to bake for about a good part of a 45 minutes to an hour to get them all nice and um, crunchy, hopefully, on the top and crispy and then with that brown sugar and cinnamon mixture all over them so this is a real real easy dish and like i told y'all i think i told y'all earlier today or maybe yesterday whenever the last time i video that today is going to be one of those easy breezy meals it's not going to require a lot of standing so here we go y'all getting them all mixed up you have to just get your hands in there and yeah my hands are clean this is my family I'm cooking for. They trust my hands. So, I'm good. You know, people get all up in arms about that kind of thing. And I get comments about it as well. But understand, folks, I'm, when you see me cooking here, I'm cooking for my family. I would not dare not have clean hands for food I'm cooking for my family. Or for anybody, for that matter. Because, it's, I mean, it's just the right thing to do. So, anywho, back to the business at hand. Just a little bit, that, that uh, sea salt is just absolutely awesome. And that little sweet and sour. And I'm not going to play around with my uh, brown sugar. I'm going to get it going on here. Because uh, I'm not going to spoon it on. I'm just going to slosh it on to make sure that it gets on there really, really good. Not too much because I, I really don't want it to make a syrup as such. I just want these to be lightly sweetened with that salt. So, got all that on there. Oops. Gonna get it mixed around real good. And like I said, the last thing I'm gonna do with them is go ahead and arrange them on my baking dish. I've not done this before, so you saw it here first on my channel as far as I'm concerned, okay? Alrighty. Mm. And, you know, depending on what they look like and what they taste like, because you know I'm going to sample them, uh, we're going to say that um, they are going to be done in about a good hour and a half. Kanye, 273-1156. Cynthia. Okay, now I got them sloshed enough, and also on the stove over here to the side, I've got the, I've got my um, baking dish on. I've got the heat on under it because I want that pan hot. So when they hit the oven, I want them to instantly start cooking. Because like I said, we got a, I got an hour and a half worth of cooking that needs to happen to these potatoes. So let's get turned around here. Let's see if we can get over here. Here we go. Okay, Get, uh, got everything in frame, but what I need in frame, y'all. Let's see. One of these days, y'all act like y'all don't see my arm and all this kind of stuff, okay? Seem like it didn't happen. And that little fuzzy thing y'all see there, that's my new mic. It has a muffler on it. So I put the muffle on so to muffle out any external noise that really should not be on there. So y'all have to excuse that little flub. Don't y'all just enjoy to know that life really happens, that nothing is perfect. So we got this going and we're going to continue to put the, the range of potatoes on there. See what I mean about having that uh, pan sizzling like that? that gets some already cooking that pan is hot and i'm praying that all of these are going to fit on the same pan because i do want to get them all going at the same time i may have to use the overlap pan but that's okay but i'll get the bulk of them on here 
You just lay them down as flat as you can. And also, while I've got them on the stove here, that'll get a little crisp on, on that bottom side. And maybe I won't have to turn them. How's that for thinking? Okay. Again, this is five pounds of organic sweet potatoes. I don't know. Um, that's my brown sugar and stuff right there. Okay. So, I'm, this is all there is to it. I've, you know, I feel the potatoes, season the potatoes. Now I'm just arranging them on the pan. So, basically, as far as putting this dish together, I'm done. So when you see these potatoes again, they will be ready for the flavor train. Okay, once I got those potatoes all mixed up with that, uh, with all my additives, my seasons and whatnot, I've arranged them on a baking sheet, and I've got the baking sheet heated on the stove so that they get a little bit of crisp on the bottom. So when I run them through the oven for about an hour to 45 minutes, I may not have to. Uh, turn them so we're hoping for that so we're going to go ahead and get them into the oven i got that oven set to 400 and 400 yeah 400 degrees so we're going to bake them at 400 for about 45 minutes when you see them again they'll be ready for flavor train y'all uh, time for the burgers to get started got them on the griddle then i'm going to put them in the pan so yep i can do four at a time Okay, so when y'all see these burgers again now, they're going to be on the flavor train. Okay, y'all, these burgers are called Chop House by Holden. Well, Chop house by holding Angus burgers. As you can see, these nice uh, Angus and um, brisket beef. That's the name of it. I cannot remember where I purchased them. I think it was at Sam's Club, but I believe that's where I got them from. They are wonderful. They're nice, beefy, and they're steak burgers, and they're one third pound. I'm using my grill over there just to give them those lines and then I'm transfer them over here to the other skillet to get them fried up. So I'm doing 12 of those and I'm going to do 6 of just turkey burgers for those who don't eat beef. So we're getting it going on y'all and everything else is in the oven. My sweet potatoes are in the oven. My corn is in the oven. I didn't show y'all that uh, before I put it in but I, what I did with the corn was just buttered it down and seasoned it up real good covered it and put it through the oven and of course hot dogs are in the oven so we'll be right back okay y'all this is when leftovers come in handy i had this much mac and cheese left over from the last time i cooked it a couple weeks ago so we're gonna break it out it's thawed out i'm gonna run it back through the oven just drizzle some butter and sprinkle some um cheese over it and we're gonna have some new macaroni and cheese okay y'all hey come on i'm doing Savoy cabbage, sweet and sour cabbage. First time I've used for Savoy, but here we go. Just gonna slice it, slice the onion, stir fry it, put the sweet and sour sauce on it, and we're gonna be done. Okay, cabbage is almost chopped. We're getting ready to mix the uh, sweet and sour sauce in the pan, stir fry it for about five, ten minutes, and then we're ready to chow down on it, y'all. I'm going to put the, I've not worked with this kind of cabbage before, so I'm going to put these thicker pieces uh, in first to make sure that they get to whatever consistency they need to be on. So this, this Savoy cabbage, if I've ever cooked it before, I don't remember, probably years and years ago when we lived in Spain, I think, because we had a friend that made a lot of Asian dishes, I'm sure. But normally I use regular cabbage, but I thought I'd switch it up a little bit today. Just to keep things interesting. Um, almost done with the chopping process. Okay. Now this mixture is uh, three tablespoons of, of um, 
soy sauce, a teaspoon of ginger, a tablespoon of uh, gold mountain seasoning, and three tablespoons of my uh, rice vinegar. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting this mixture over. Oh, and I also got sliced onions as well to go in here. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting my uh, sauce over the cabbage. And then I'm sure it's going to fry up just like regular cabbage. At least that's what I'm thinking. But before I do all of that, y'all, you know I got to hit it with my... Oh, yeah. I'm doing this for, from a recipe. See, this is why I don't like to cook for recipes. I like to do my own thing. But I'm trying to be good today and do a recipe so I can give you clearer instructions on how to make this particular dish. So what I'm doing is hitting this uh, cabbage with a little bit of complete seasoning. And of course, you know I'm going to hit it with some, um, you got it, some garlic powder. I got to put garlic powder on it. So I'm going to just garlic powder that up. Um, complete seasoning on there. Get the rest of my onions chopped in there. Now this, remember, is my um, my cabbage that is a little bit more coarse than that real frilly kind. It may all be the same. I have no clue, but I'm going to find out as soon as it hits the pan. So in the pan, where I've got um, the bulk of the cabbage, I've got it in my big bowl, of course. I'm going to go ahead and just drop these right on top like that. I'll bring it over into view where you can see it. Let's get it all off the counter here. Okay. All that out. Well, I'm trying to do a little cleanup, y'all. A little bit of a cleanup so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. Okay, there's my sauce. And here's my cabbage. And what all I'm going to do with this sauce here is I'm just going to pour the sauce right over. Okay. According to this recipe, now this should be enough to. Um, make this cabbage sweet and sour and you know if it's not sweet and sour enough I'm gonna do some extra sauce over here on the side and I'm just gonna take my hands and go ahead and do this so I can go ahead and get this into the pan so I got folks ready to eat okay I'm hoping that sauce ran all through there and what I'm gonna do here is make sure okay yeah Supposed to make sure that this the oil is supposed to be really, really hot because my camera person called out today. I'm having to do the camera and the cooking, so yeah, got that oil real hot. Just swirl that camera right around there, y'all. That's all I'm doing. I'm gonna get it right over there to skill. How's that for? A great camera question. We're gonna keep her. So it's gonna create a lot of smoke. So be careful. Keep your hands out of the way. Okay, you can hear that sizzling. So basically, what I'm doing is this stir fried cabbage. We've done this many times. The difference here is we're using a different kind of uh, cabbage and we're making it a sweet and sour. So what's going to happen is I'm going to stir fry this for the next about 10-12 minutes and it's going to be ready to eat. Uh, make sure you keep that heat up high because it's got, you're going to get a lot of condensation in there because you know cabbage is a water food. So I see right now well, I'm going to have to do some more sweet and sour sauce to go over that to get it really like it's supposed to be. So meanwhile y'all. Hang in there and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, dinner is served. Everything is ready. I got that sweet and sour Chinese cabbage. I got those uh, Angus and um, chuck beef patties and a few turkey burgers. Some roast oven roasted hot dogs. Those baked uh, sweet potato wedges. Oven roasted corn. Of course, the uh, condiments to go on the hamburgers, the lettuce, tomatoes, and onions, and my good old leftover mac and cheese. We're getting ready to sit down and do it, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in now, and remember, keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down so, until I decide to cook again. Thank y'all for tuning in. 
I'm just going to cut it off right here. I didn't talk to y'all a whole lot today, but I still love you anyway. So keep the prayers going up. You cut off on me. Okay. Y'all come on.